Hey, what's going on guys? So today I want to make a video uh, for beginners that are wanting to get a sump but maybe uh, is afraid or intimidated by all the parts that goes into setting up a sump. I'll cover the components that is needed for a sump, why get a sump in the first place, and its benefits. So let's start off with what is a sump. So a sump is just another filter that's generally used in larger tanks where the hang on the back and canister filter isn't ideal. Now you can use a sump in a small tank and you can use you know hang on the back and canister filters for larger tanks but if you just want one filter this is where the sump comes into play um, where it can you know essentially filter you know larger tanks multiple tanks if that's what you, you want to set up instead of having you know three or four hang on the backs or multiple canister filters just a you know filter one large tank let's go over the components that's needed to build a sump very first thing you'll need is an overflow box. This could be drilled or non-drilled. The difference here is with a non-drilled uh, overflow box, you'll have generally the box on the outside. And a lot of my tanks right now is set up that way. And what you'll need in that design is a U-shaped tube, um, which essentially pumps you know, water from the tank out into the uh, pipe and down into your sump and with this setup you'll need a siphon starter or some method to start the siphon I do have previous old videos that you can check out uh, in terms of how to start a siphon um, but that's the one drawback is that you'll need uh, to somehow start the siphon and if it ever breaks you'll need to start it again the other benefit to not having the tank drilled um, is that you can move you know your overflow box to different locations if you end up changing it or moving you know your tank somewhere else to a different location where you know the overflow box that you have set up isn't ideal in that location where you might need it to move to the other side of the tank or you may want to you know completely take that tank apart and convert it to something else um, and you know that tank can still be used because it's not drilled. Now, if you have your tank drilled, um, it's permanent, so you can't really change the filter um, location or position anymore. One thing is you don't have to worry about starting the siphon or the siphon ever breaking. You'll always have an exit point for the water to dump into the sump. You know, from the overflow box, generally it's pumped down to the first chamber of the sump. Generally, the first chamber of the sump is like your filter socks, your mechanical filter. Now, this is the first stage of the sump where it'll catch mainly all the big particles and debris um, that's from your main display tank. The next chamber is where you generally house your chemical filtration, where it'll be either all your media, it could be your carbons. Um, it could be a skimmer, it could be, um, you know, where your heater sits, it could be where your probe sits for measurement, um, it could be a refugium, it could be a lot of things here. Now, obviously, if you have a larger sump, there's more area where you can kind of put things here and there, and you can kind of have a lot more options to play with um, and space to kind of put things there. Then lastly, once it moves through that chamber, it will go to the return chamber where the pump sits. And this is where the pump will pump the water from the sump back into your main display tank. This next component in the sump isn't required, but definitely makes life a lot easier is an auto top off. So this is kind of linked to where your return pump is. Now obviously in a tank, water evaporates. And as water evaporates, that compartment of water will drop. And if it drops too low, the pump won't work. Uh, with an auto top off, you'll have sensors that sit in that compartment where it'll fill in water when water evaporates to keep the water level above the operating levels for the pump. So let's talk about the benefits of using a sump versus a hang on the back or a canister filter or any other filter that might be out there. We kind of mentioned this briefly but you can plumb multiple tanks together and have it all powered off of just one sump. Kind of like in the back here, I have three tanks set up. They're all plumbed together and they're only running off of one sump. So instead of having multiple dedicated filters for every tank, you can kind of just have one sump to do everything. The second benefit is the skimming aspect of the sump. So with a sump setup, with the overflow box, you have a surface skimmer. So with a surface skimmer, you have a better oxygen exchange with the air. You know, with a hang on the back filter and a canister filter, sometimes you'll notice is if you have a larger tank or you know a tank that's longer and a filter sits on one side of the tank, you'll notice that on the other side of the tank, like you'll see like a, a film or a silk that's on the surface of the water sometimes. And that's because the water isn't being skimmed and dirt debris dust kind of just collects there 
Now with that dirty surface, it doesn't allow good oxygen exchange in the water and really that doesn't benefit the livestock in the tank. The other benefits of having a sump is easy access to your filters where you can kind of just grab them and clean them versus with having a canister filter, for example, not, normally what you have to do is you have to turn everything off, like open everything up and then clean everything and then put everything back together. The other good thing with a sump is you can hide kind of your heater, you can hide your probes, you can kind of have everything down in the bottom of the sump and kind of hidden away um, away from the main display tank if you wanted to. A sump also adds extra water volume into your system um, which will kind of absorb the parameter swings that you may have in a smaller tank. So for example if you had let's say like a 50 gallon tank and if you had a 20 gallon sump with that ideally you know you have 50 plus 20 gallons that's 70 gallons total of water volume so that 70 gallon system will be less prone to parameter swings versus a 50 gallon tank all right guys and that is the basic overview of a sump i hope this video helped you guys out if you guys aren't subscribed yet make sure to subscribe and like always to next one guys peace